Hi, Peter Dingle here, PhD. Today I want to talk about intergenerational microbiome loss. And you're probably wondering what that is, but it plays a significant role in our microbiome biodiversity. Now, what's most important about our microbiome is that not the numbers as such, but the number of different varieties and species of microorganisms in our gut. So the, the fungi and the different fungi, the archaea and the different archaea, the bacteria and the different bacteria, uh, the uh, viruses, yep, lots of viruses in there. Um, also what we, what, what we call uh, bacteriophages of viruses in the gut and the sheer diversity of them. Now, apparently what has been happening is this intergenerational loss. Now, there are lots of reasons why we lose our microbiome biodiversity, antibiotics, and I've, I'll talk about those later, and, and antiseptics and antibacterials and all these things that everyone's being told to overuse at the moment. But this intergenerational loss is something that we can do a lot with. See, originally we were in touch with the, the, the land. We were hunter-gatherers, we were farmers, without pesticides and chemicals and so on. So up to about 100 years ago, whatever was in the environment was literally in our gut. And so we're talking about this huge diversity of a, of a thousand or more different species and varieties of microorganisms in there. Now, as we've left the land and we've gone into a much more... Um, a, city-based, um, home, domestic environment, much more uh, hygienized and so on, we've lost that diversity. But what happens is that with every single generation, we're passing less and less on. So we're passing fewer of these of the diversity of these microbiome onto the next generation. So as, as, a, as a mother, not me of course, but uh, as a mother, mothers will pass on whatever microbiome they have. So there is a placental microbiome, for example. So when babies are born, they're actually born with a, a microbiome. Very interesting research on that now. But whatever the mother has on their skin, obviously, obviously in their gut microbiome and oral microbiome, they pass directly onto the child. So hopefully it expands out a little bit and starts to expand out because the broader it is as we get older, the healthier we are. Now, what happens is that because the mother is exposed to antibiotics, the mother is exposed to um, uh, less bacteria in the environment because we're living in an urban environment, you literally don't get that biodiversity accumulating and, of course, the onslaught of antibiotics and antiseptics and sterile food and cooked foods, all of which destroy your potential microbiome, means that the mum starts off with less now, the, the, the challenge we face there is that we now have to get the infant's microbiome to increase. And that's the challenge that we're, we're always talking about in, the, in this group with the information. So the mother starts off um, with less, the baby is born, they have less of a microbiome and less exposure to the microbiome. And as a result of all of that, we pass on less to the next generation. Of course, when that baby grows up, we find that they actually have a, a reduced microbiome because of the same reasons. And then they pass that because they've got even less in the microbiome because they've been put on antibiotics in infanthood. They're, they're, they're exposed to antiseptics and antibiotics. And uh, they're exposed to environments where literally, literally, which can poison the, the growth, exposed to diets which feed the toxic ones like the candidas and the helicobacters and so on. And as a result, their microbiome decreases. So the next generation gets even less. So what we've actually found now is that over the last 30 to 50 years, we've lost probably about 30% of our microbiome diversity. Now, if we compare uh, a microbiome diversity of someone in the city, you, me, and all the others watching this video, to someone uh, on a farm, or even better, in nature, living, living out there in, in the wild of the Amazon or the outback Australia or somewhere, their microbiome biodiversity is so much healthier and stronger. And, and by the way, it's not just more diverse, but also totally different. Totally different. And what we also know is that if you're brought up on that farm, so you're born into the bush or born on, on the land or born into a farm, for example, you actually maintain a lot of that microbiome really all through your life. So you can actually see someone at the age of 30 or 50 was born on a farm or had exposure to a farm early on in life. So what's critical with this 
intergenerational microbiome loss is to make sure our kids get exposed to a lot, a huge array of microorganisms in their early life to generate, uh, to stimulate uh, the immune system, to look after the, the gut microbiome rather than this sterile environment that we bring them up in. So I hope you understand the concept of intergenerational microbiome loss and lots more coming. Uh, if you like this information, check out our membership. We've got a, a gut health and a wellness membership site which has so much information on it. I'm sure you'll be excited by what we talk about there, particularly around um, gut solutions. Thanks, guys.